So once we've added those, what we need to do is purge that uh, new screens list so every time it cycles through, it doesn't keep stacking them up. Um, so we're just going to add new screens dot clear and that dumps all the objects that are left over in that list. All right. So now we're going to set a little uh, a little routine here to uh, check the screen focus. Uh, managing the focus of our screens is very important. Um, probably for hang well for handling input and things like that. Um, it's you know it you could have multiple screens up and uh, only want one of them to uh, actually be focused to where they'll accept events from either the keyboard, the mouse, or uh, any other input methods or updates. So uh, what we will do now is cycle through our screen list saying if screens dot count is greater than zero then for i equals screens <clears throat> dot count minus one we always do minus one on our uh, array counts because the arrays are zero based. Uh, that means zero counts as a record. So, uh, you know, much like a lot of things in computing, uh, for example, if you have, um, you know, the value 255, uh, you know, with a zero base, uh, you're at, you actually have 256 values. So, because you're counting zero as a value. Um, so what we will do is say uh, for i equals screens to count, uh, sorry, screens dot count minus one to zero, and we will step minus one. Okay, so it's going to count the uh, count the number of records in our screens list, and starting with the last record, it's going to count backwards to zero. And then we will say if screens i, what you, as you can see what we're doing is we're using i as a, an integer for, to create an index for that uh, object. So if there's uh, 10 uh, screens in the list, it's going to be 9 to 0, okay, or 0 to 9 as the index. And uh, we can update those records according to their index or target them. So we'll say if screens i dot grab focus, then screens index i dot focus equals so we actually set the screens focus to true and uh, we don't want multiple screens to be focused so uh, once this occurs once we find the screen that we want to focus we are going to exit this little routine Let's say exit four all right hopefully that all uh, made sense there <clears throat> um, finally uh, we need to be able to actually handle input for the focus screen. So let's say handle input impout for focused screen. Once again, looping through our screen list, we'll say for each <clears throat> found screen as base screen in screens. And uh, I guess, you know, this is sort of misleading. Uh, what we're actually doing here is checking, um, 
we're going to be checking the focus of the actual game screen, uh, which is our entire application. If it's minimized down in the taskbar, uh, you don't want to be passing inputs to your game. Uh, you know, moving your character around when you can't actually see the screen or anything, or if it's in the background in Windows or uh, things like that. So what we're going to say is if globals, going back to our, our very base uh, globals class here, we're going to say window focused, then screen, that being the actual focused in-game in -game screen, dot Oops, I'm sorry, found screen, not to screen. Dot handle input. You remember we created that handle input sub in our base screen over here. And that's what we'll be using from each one of our screens to manage input. So just to go back through this, uh, like what I was saying, um, we do not want to handle input to our game screens, any of them unless the actual game window is focused, okay? Um, that means in the foreground in, in Windows itself. <clears throat> so finally, once we've gone through all of that, we are, we are at a point where we need to actually update our screen. So we'll say, uh, sorry, keep doing that, found screen dot update. Kind of funny. That's you know this whole update sub was uh, made to arrive at this uh, final update. So uh, once we've completed that, we are ready to move on. All right. Make sure I got everything here. And I think that looks okay. So. Now we just need to go back to our game foundation here, our game one class, and uh, tell it how to use our new screen manager. So first we have to actually create a new base instance of our screen manager. So we'll say private screen manager as screen manager. All right. So now we have a variable a container here to actually manage that. Um, now we will move down to our load content sub. We'll go below here. And this is where we will be adding our default screens. These will be the screens that are visible as soon as we begin the game. So in most cases, this will be a title screen or something like that. Um, let's go ahead and create a new instance of our screen manager class here. So we'll say screen manager equals new instance of our screen manager class. All right, good, good. Then we will tell it um, how to handle updates. Uh, so we will come down here and we will say update our, whoops, our screens. Okay. And to do this, we are going to invoke the screen manager dot update. All right. So every game, every cycle through the update, the game update, um, it's going to kind of cascade down through all the uh, updates of the screen manager and all of the screens that it's containing. So it'll kind of keep track of those, pretty much every object in the game that way. It's pretty, pretty nice. So next up, we're going to have to uh, actually create a screen to test. Um, you definitely want to probably save your project at this point. 